So welcome to this first demonstration of the sorts of common uh, manipulations that are often necessary to digital images. So I've intentionally chosen a black and white image. This is a phase contrast image of one of the cell cultures that we use in our research group. By using a black and white image just makes it a little bit easier to begin with some of the basics. So you can see here in Photoshop we can get information that tells us it came off a color camera, although we don't actually need color information in this application. It also tells us that it's an 8-bit image. Um, if it was 16-bit or 32, we could drop that back. And I'll explain a bit more about what that means in just a moment. First thing we'll do here is we can remove the color information because it has no inherent value um, for, for what we we're looking at here. Um, and that reduces the size, the, the memory size of this image. Um, then we go to image size and you'll see that often with most digital cameras the physical dimensions and the resolution, um, how it's opened in Photoshop is not really optimized to most applications. So that symbol there just means that the width and height are constrained if that's clicked. So if we change the width then we'll automatically adjust the height. So about eight centimeters. I generally find that's about right for most applications like publishing figures in manuscripts. And then I'll just increase that resolution to 300. In doing so, you can see that the amount of memory has dramatically reduced from the original 4.7 meg. So if you were worried about that, if you wanted to try and maximize the amount of data that's there, you could of course you know, re-increase your, your physical size, um, um, which may be beyond what you actually need for the application, or you can alter the, the resolution. So it's often good when learning to use Photoshop just to play around with these parameters and see how that affects the overall uh, memory of the image. But for this application here, 8 by 6 is about right and 300 dpi I generally find that's that's optimal for for most applications. Okay so now that we've got the right size and resolution let's now go back in here and go to adjustments. So there's a whole variety of things that can be done. The ones that I would use most commonly certainly for a black and white image are brightness and contrast and levels. Let's look at brightness and contrast so it brings up this menu and then we can simply by eye we can drag that cursor around until we get something that looks about right and depending upon your application that might be fine or that's way too bright and that's way too dark. So um, what does that mean? Well this is how the computer interprets grey levels for an 8-bit image. There's 256 combinations of zeros and ones between black and white so that's represented as a histogram for an image such as this one, which is another cell culture. If you were to increase the brightness, then effectively what you're saying to the computer is to move those values on the right-hand side of the histogram until they are in that 255, 255 range. Um, alternatively, if you decrease brightness, then you're pushing the histogram towards the left. Bringing that back to the middle position again, the other alternative is to change the contrast. So by pushing down on the top of that histogram, you're now increasing the contrast by spreading more of the values at either end up to that maximum black or, or maximum white. Or you can do the opposite, so that gives you something that's lacking contrast. So now let's have a look at our image again. It actually looks pretty good, maybe just needs a bit of contrast improvement. To see that more clearly, we'll go into the levels function, and that's where you can actually see that histogram of gray levels being demonstrated. So as you can see, there is no black and there is no white really being demonstrated on that screen. So to make the image more pleasing to the eye, so that it actually has the full spectrum from black 
on the left and to white on the far right, just by bringing those cursor points in a little bit now ensures that the image has the desired contrast for maximum uh, clarity. And there's this intermediate cursor which you can also move around, but I, I generally leave that at one for most applications. Okay, so we can cancel from that and just quickly show you another option. You may have just noticed there that there is this auto button. So clicking on that, interestingly, it's brought the, the black level up to where we probably had it before, um, but I think I'd prefer that white level. Just a little bit further over. Right, so now how does that differ if we're looking at a color image? This is a H&E stain section of conjunctival tissue taken from rabbits. If we open that up, we can see, yes, indeed, it's a color image for color camera, RGB, and it's an 8-bit camera. So that's what we're starting with. Um, we need to leave it in color, obviously, to see the different stains there. But the image is, again, far from optimal. So 45 centimeters is beyond what we would need for most applications. Um, and the resolution is also too low. So let's adjust that to 8 by 6 approximately again and just increase the resolution to 300. So we've only lost a little bit in terms of all the information that's there. Um, if we were to go any further at this point, we should probably save as a different file name just so that the original data is still retained should we wish to go back and start from scratch. So I'm just going to put the ADJ symbol there to indicate that it has been adjusted for size and resolution. We can apply some compression at this point too, but I'll just leave that as it is. Okay, so now in terms of brightness or contrast, we can see fairly clear details of cell nuclei, and there's some collagen fibers there in the extracellular matrix. But let's go to the adjustments. Um, again, we can play around with brightness and contrast. And um, from what we saw before, you can imagine how that's changing the histogram that we spoke about earlier. But we're not really looking at gray levels. For an RGB image, what we're looking at is a red level, a green level, and a blue level. So to see that more clearly, let's actually go into adjustments again, and we'll go to levels so that we can actually visualize those three color channels separately. Okay, it's still giving an arbitrary output here in black and white, but that's just overall intensity for each of those three channels. So at the moment, that's showing you the spectrum of the histogram. Clearly, it's not optimized for its contrast in RGB. Um, we could bring those down, but let's have a look at those individually. So there's the red channel and the green channel and the blue. And so it's a combination of those three channels that gives us the final image. So going back to the red, we could adjust that down. And then likewise on the lower end. And it's going to look a bit odd <laughs> until we've actually optimized all three channels. So clearly that's not perfect. But if we do the green channel, again, bringing a little bit in on the right, bringing it up on the left, it's looking a bit closer. And then finally, the blue channel. If you chose to, you could record the values underneath for each and make it consistent. But on other occasions, it might be necessary to have different levels for each. OK, so there it is. Now, I'm just going to quit from that and go back to the unmodified version. Just check the size is all still there. Yep, 8 by 6, 300. What if you wanted to combine three images? So here I've got some other sections taken from Rabbit Ocular Surface. This is cornea. 
and it's taken with the same camera, the same lens. And here we have the junction between the cornea and the conjunctiva known as the limbus. So again, I'll just adjust that to eight by six, 300. So they all need to be identical in order to combine them. And now by opening up a new page in Photoshop, I've just got this customized page I've created that's approximately the size of an A4 sheet of paper. If I go back in now and simply select all and then control C to copy and then control V to paste, first thing I'll do here is to transfer each of those images onto the one page. You'll notice down in the right hand bottom corner that as I add each image, it's creating a separate layer. And I'll say something more about that in just a moment. Okay, and finally for the corneal limbus. So imagine that you wanted to display those and imagine that you wanted to optimize the, the contrast and brightness such that they're all being modified the same way. Now at the moment, they're all separate and you could modify them separately. Um, I'm just going to crop this while I've got the opportunity to do so because once you combine all these images, the computer will assume that the white area around the border is part of the image and we don't want that. So we could crop it down. Okay, so um, here's the flattening tool. And as you do that, you see in the bottom right hand side now that that's completely flat. Let's just go back and show that again. So if we unflatten, you'll see there's separate layers. And often there is advantage in working with layers separately should you wish to um, deselect one so you can't see it or highlight others to um, basically manipulate each of those images separately. But for this situation, we're going to flatten them to demonstrate a way that you can make an adjustment across all three images at the same time. So since that's been flattened, we can now go back into levels. I won't bother to do it separately for the red, green and blue channels. I'll just do it for the RGB combined channel. And there you go. Just by moving that around a bit, we've now improved the contrast somewhat. And um, you can see there there's, I think, what looks like a a more vibrant, optimized image of conjunctiva, cornea, and the intermediate tissue, corneal limbus.